This is Sebastian Metal Martinez for MMA Nit. I'm in here with Damir the Bosnian Bog. Sorry. This is Sebastian Metal Martinez for MMA Nit here with Damir the Bosnian bomber Hadjevic, who faces Yancy Medeiros on May 22nd. Damir, finally back in action, back in fight announcements. How does it feel? You've been away for a long time. How have you been doing? It's it feels really good. I I said I was ready like in. Uh... August, September to fly, but I know we, uh, the UFC didn't get visas out to America after November or something like that, and you know I I just couldn't get a fight. So finally, a year after my last fight, I got a fight, and I'm really excited about it. You know, well, it's... it's a good task, big task ahead of me that I that I have to do. So I'm looking forward to it. And has it been frustrating because it's been over a year since you've been in the cage? Like, has it been frustrating to be inactive for that long, or have you perhaps been able to do something positive with that time? Perhaps expand your game in different ways, or you know, approach training in a different way. Yes, definitely. I've just been training and uh, not having a fight, so you can just play around and focus on other stuff, try new things, and that's what I've been doing. A lot of stuff. Uh, so I actually been training almost every day, just waiting for that call. And then when that call came, then I just you know set it in a new gear, a little bit of strategy, more conditioning. So in the beginning of my camp, I was already in good shape. So I feel good now. I'm low in weight. Everything is perfect. Better than, better than ever actually. So. You know, you can say the pandemic has also been a little blessing because I couldn't do much, just train. That's it. And not you can you can go on vacation. Nothing. You just focus on training. Focus on your next fight, actually. So. So I guess Denmark's uh, strict regulations have been kind of a benefit to you, then. Yeah, it has. It's not so strict here as in other countries. I see uh, where I'm from in Bosnia, people, they got curfew from right to five in the morning. We, we don't got curfews here. We just need to wear masks and boutiques and, uh, you know, restaurants be closed. Fitness gym has been closed. But we professionals, we can train. That's my job. So it's not been so bad. We, we have it good in Denmark. We, we shouldn't be uh, complaining too much. All right, fair enough, fair enough. And you aren't particularly the type to complain either. I mean, throughout most of your career, you've taken most things that have come your way in a positive uh, light. And I think that's something that a lot of your training partners would agree on. Uh, so when you did get this fight, I know you've never been one to be picky. You've always been the type of fighter to accept any challenge given to you. You were first supposed to face uh, Nicolas Mota. He ends up pulling out, gets replaced by Yancy Medeiros. And I think... Maybe in some ways, like an almost better fight for you because a bit of a bigger name. He's more well established. I mean, facing a UFC debutante, it's like it can be a big risk. But now you're facing an established guy who's fought a lot of big names. It was that sort of your reaction as well that it was almost a better fight for you now? Yes, definitely. You put it all there. It's uh, when you fight like a de debutant, they don't come with uh, much uh, anything behind them. You know, nobody knows them. So. But now they're going to know my fight and they're going to be more focused about it. And there's much more to win, you know, bigger reward. Because, as you said, he is a well-known name. He was once top 15. Uh, you know, he trains with the champ, Max Holloway. Mm -hmm. And he's also, uh, like, on the DS team. Yeah. And, I, and I like the DS team, too. So <laughs> I, I have nothing against that. But it's cool. I, I think it's it's a much better fight for me. I I, I like this more, even though Nicholas Mats always is all, was also a dangerous opponent. But yes, he's a wild one. He's like uh, anything can happen in this fight because he's so unpredictable and he fights to the last. You know, he's not a, he doesn't give up. So it's gonna be a gritty, hard, ugly fight. And I accept the challenge. I will put myself in there for those. 17 minutes if it takes and all you know do whatever it takes so i'm looking forward to it and i'm also you know uh yeah 
itching to get back in where it seems. I can tell it. Yep. And as you mentioned, he's got kind of a chaotic style, like very unpredictable. He really, you know, throws himself into the fire, uh, takes a lot of risks. How do you train for somebody like that? Because your training partners aren't necessarily going to go with the same sort of reckless attacks that he would. No, but we got some herky jerks, the herky jerky <laughs> kind of fighters in our gym. So I use them. I use the most unpredictable ones. You know, you can never know what's going to happen. But, you know, I don't think there's one fighter that, that's the same. So he probably he don't, don't have a fighter like me in his gym. Hmm. But it doesn't matter. I know some of the things he, he does that I have to be careful for. And that's it. And then I'm going to do my thing. I'm not going to worry too much about, oh, this, oh, that. Then I'm going to be stuck in his game. I want him in my game. So, you know, it is a game, but still not a game. You play. It's, it's a game you fight and you feel. It's like a virtual reality game. Yeah, it's like it's like a dangerous virtual reality game for sure. Yeah. I played virtual really? reality, the Walking Dead game. I did not start bleeding from that. That's for sure. Yeah. But so if you yeah. look at, on paper, you know, if you sort of because obviously you you are a well-rounded fighter, but if you look on paper, you know, he's a pretty skilled grappler. He's called you know sometimes like the Hawaiian Diaz brother. Are you expecting him to try and take you down, to try and sort of use what could be perceived as a, an advantage there? Or do you think he's going to stand and trade with you? Both. I think uh, every fight I fought, he tried to take me down. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to expect it all. I'm not going to go in as in my last fight. I thought, okay, this is going to be a striking fight. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that mistake again. Maybe I'll take him down. Who knows? So, yeah, we'll see about that. What would you say is your biggest advantage here? Because, I mean, if, again, looking purely on paper, one could say you're a little bit more crisp and maybe more technical. But, you know, paper, the fight isn't fought on paper. The fight is fought in the cage. So, you know, what would you say? Yeah, definitely. I think I'm a little more tighter in my boxing. My boxing is better. He's more like a brawler. I'm like more of a boxer. So I'm going to box a brawler. That's what I'm going to do. All Don't right. get crazy with him. That's what he, he wants. He ain't gonna get it. You know, maybe a little crazy. We all go a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> but you know, I'm not gonna go in there I just brawl with him. I train too much for that. But you never know. Well sometimes in that moment in the heat of the battle, you just ah oh, fuck it and you're like, Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> no, don't risk at all. Yeah, but I'm tr I'm gonna try to stay composed and uh, take my time. That's also what's been some of my I think weakness. It's that I just want to go in the fight. Mm. I just want to go clash right away. No, now I'm gonna try to read him a little bit more, be more calculating. Not so much just go ahead, just one, you know, straightforward. So like I'm patient and Ganu. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to play this out a little more clever if I can. That's what I hope to do. I hope not I get drawn into a crazy fight. Okay, well, if nothing else, I mean, like you said, with a perfectly placed Scream reference, we all go a little crazy sometimes. So, <laughs> uh, But one thing that's a bit of a talking point here that you, know, you can't really be shied away from, for the first time in almost 10 years, you're actually on a losing streak. Uh, you know, you fought some some good, really good opponents, but at the end of the day, results are results. Does it feel different for you in a way? Like, do you feel a, a certain sense of pressure or something like that heading into this? Yeah, of course. I want to win. I feel pressure all on myself. I want to sh I want to show myself that I could get back in the win column. And I never lost. Like, I don't think I know. I don't remember now. But yeah, I'm two in a row now. He's got three in a row. Yeah. He lost, so, you know, I know how I feel about two, but then I think, oh, how he feels about three, then I know I'm fighting a dangerous guy. He's back against the wall. I think when if so, it, when he loses, they're going to, you know, cut him. Mm. Yeah, I think that's definitely because the UFC has been talking about cuts and stuff like that. So I think, yeah. Yeah, they cut a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So, but it's always like that. You always fight for your position in UFC. It's nothing new. Like you have to be on a winning streak. Not too much lose, then some other guy will take your place. You have to fight for a spot. It's fair. It's fair for both of us. Um, you know, I'm not. I just want to win. I don't want a boring win. I want to, you know, how I picture myself. Hey, you can do this. You can do that. You know, prove to myself because I train every day. I, I train to get better. I think a lot about my training and when I get home and what I did and uh, what I did not do and uh, I record it now and you know you get smarter and wiser with time mm -hmm. so yeah I, I never feel better I, I've, I'm feeling I'm in my prime right now never been so strong never been so fight IQ it's uh, on point everything but you know when it's game time fight time that is something different sometimes these nerves and you know and split seconds uh, you have to do a calculation mm. you know and let's see if it is a challenge i challenge myself yeah you've never been the type of fighter to want easy you know so a gimme no, fight or something I like that no. yeah, yeah i always I accept the fight i never ever in my life said no to a guy because especially when the ufc if you fight up there you shouldn't be saying no to anybody if you want to fight the best this is the best organization no doubt then you have to accept every fight, no matter what UFC gives you. And who knows, sometimes you think they give you a hard fight, then you win it, then you gain so much more. Then you're like, oh, think if I said no to that fight. You never know. Styles make fights. So. Yeah, well, I think this, I mean, stylistically, I, I love this fight. I think this is def uh, actually a fight of the night candidate. And I think it might be going a little bit under the radar for some uh, like mainstream casual fans who might not be as familiar. But I think for those in the know, this, this is a, a must-see fight. And, you know, there's been a lot of great fights recently. Uh, did you see uh, the UFC 261 this weekend? Yes, I did. That was, you know, pretty much every single fight had some crazy talking points. Like, what what was the biggest takeaway for you? Was it a nasty leg break? Was it Fug Rose? Was it Usman? Like, what were the biggest uh, standout points for you there? Yeah, it was the leg break uh, that Rose won. I thought actually that uh, Zhang would win. I thought she would mm -hmm. be too strong physically for Rose. But Rose outsmarted her. She said that for inside leg kick, then the high kick, she was out. And... She wouldn't accept it. That was so funny. Zhang, I understand. This girl probably did three months of her life. As they, as they said, she only eats, sleeps, trains. So going to lose like that in a minute, you know, I, I tried that last time. You know, in Brazil, it hurt, man, because you put so much time in it. And imagine your toilet visit was longer than the fight, you know. You know, that's crazy when you think about yeah. it. I remember all the time I put in, you know, and now I feel, I felt her pain. I felt Zhang's pain. But still, it was a, it was a good stoppage. But yeah. she just wouldn't accept it. And then, yeah, Usman. Yeah, damn. I thought it was be it would be a harder fight. But uh, it's I think it's typical. When somebody takes a fight on short notice, they do better than on a fight camp. Uh, it's like also Nate Diaz and Conor. Hmm like a little bit i don't know if they get more time to prepare for each other it's it's more nerves more you know the training takes a toll on you i don't know what it is but he looked good now i want to see that colby fight yeah how do you think that's gonna go because i mean i think a lot of people feel that colby is the toughest matchup for usman i think maybe their first fight was pretty indicative of that but so then some people saying that Usman is improving way too much under Trevor Whitman. It's going to be a different game. What do you make of it? I agree with the Trevor Whitman thing. He's uh, striking and has only been better. We saw it in the Burns fight, his jabs. Yeah. That was the first time you, seen, uh, you see him use jabs like that. Very perfect and uh, precise. He picked him apart. And mm. uh, also with uh, Masuda. And Masuda, he's a good boxer. He understands boxing, the movement. The physics and uh, Usman took it to Masvidal. So I think his boxing is going to do a difference. I think mm. he's going to finish him before now. I think you're onto something. I, I also feel it's going to be a different fight from the first one. Yeah. 
Uh, and in your division, I mean, lightweight has consistently been the most talent stack division in the UFC for many, many years. Always, uh, always. There are, there are so uh, many of us at this size. We need. <laughs> First of all, how does it feel knowing that Khabib is no longer a UFC champion? Is it strange because he's been a you know he's been the champ for so long, or he'd been considered the champ for so long even when he wasn't? Not for me. I don't look at it like that way. He wasn't hmm. because he wasn't so active. So I forget. Oh, he's come back now. Oh, he's gone now. It, you know the it, it wasn't so often that he, he fought. Right. I think. But yeah, of course, if he does want to fight, I think it's good that we could get on with the division. You know, make some exciting new fights. I think he's going to come back. I hope he's going to come back, but I think he will. Give him a year, he will come back. The competition will, you know, will get back to him. Okay, interesting. But yeah, rounding off and uh, circling back to your fight. You've been out of a cage for a while, you know, over a year. And I know you're psyched to get back and you've been making the most of that time. As you said, it's, you know, a bit of a must-win fight for the two of you. What can fans expect from the return of the Bosnian bomber, May 22nd? They can expect some action, some hard shots, some kicks, maybe some shakedown or some ground upon. We'll see. You know, I don't even know for myself. I know I'm just going to go in. I'm going to fight. And where the fight takes ghost, I'm going to fight there. I don't want to set too many scenarios. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I put myself, you know, in bad situations in my head many times. Think about stuff, but um, when I go into a fight, I'm just going to, you know, go with the flow where the fight takes me. Know what I shouldn't do, you know, I have these things. And just try, you know, technically get the win. Not too crazy, but a little crazy. Yeah. I don't Nothing. want to say too much because I, uh, after years, I've been fighting now for some years. Every time you say something, it never goes that way. <laughs> Even if you want it like that, you know. So yeah, it's like a, it's like a commentator's though. curse. You say like, oh, he he's uh, traditionally not good at uh, defending takedowns. I mean, he does it as you're you know commentating that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything like there's so many examples. Uh, so. Expect a win. That's what you can expect. But otherwise, sit back, relax, enjoy a good fight. Because one of us got to go after this one. There you have it. Somebody has got to go. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, fans back home, be sure to tune in for Damir Hajovic versus Yancy Medeiros. Uh, UFC fight night, May 22nd. Damir, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for giving us the time. And uh, good luck in your preparations for the fight. Thank you, my friend. And I hope I see you soon. Hey, we will, man. I'll make my way over to Copenhagen as soon as I can. See you over there, you know? Yeah, (laughs) that's right. (laughs) All right. Bye-bye, man. Have a good one.